Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said Wednesday that fighting was still raging in a key eastern frontline city that a Russian mercenary group earlier said it controlled, as Moscow announced a new military commander in Ukraine. The fate of Soledar in eastern Ukraine was uncertain after Russian group Wagner claimed it controlled the gateway town, but the Kremlin cautioned against declaring victory prematurely. And in his daily address, Zelensky insisted the front was holding. The terrorist state and its propagandists are trying to pretend to have achieved some successes in Soledar, Zelensky said, but the fighting continues. Both Moscow and Kyiv have said the battle for Soledar has been long and brutal. If it did fall to Moscow's forces, that would mark Russia's first significant territorial gain in Ukraine in months. The war-battered salt mining town in the eastern Donetsk region lies some 15 kilometers from Bakhmut, a larger urban hub that Russia has been trying to seize. The head of Wagner Group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, claimed Wednesday that his forces had taken control of the whole territory of Soledar, while urban battles were fought in the city center. Russian state news agency RIA Novosti published a photo it said had been taken in the salt mines of Soledar showing Prigozhin with armed fighters. The Ukrainian military said the pictures were taken elsewhere. And the Russian Defense Ministry urged caution, saying it was best to wait for official announcements. U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin told reporters on Wednesday that the United States could not confirm accounts that Soledar had fallen and the city had gone back and forth a number of times, and it really is some pretty brutal fighting. On the road between Bakhmut and the city of Sloviansk further west, a wounded Ukrainian soldier waiting to be evacuated said fighting in Soledar was the toughest his brigade had seen. But nobody is planning to give up the city, said the 27-year-old, who goes by the nom de guerre Babur, Beaver. Moscow, meanwhile, announced it had put Army Chief of Staff Valery Gerasimov in charge of the Ukraine conflict. Sergei Surovikin, the commander of Russia's forces in Ukraine for the past three months, will become Gerasimov's deputy, the defense ministry announced Wednesday. Analysts say that the competing statements around Soledar point to infighting among the Russian forces, who have been trying to capture the whole of Ukraine's eastern Donbass region since failing to take Kyiv last year. Ukrainian presidential adviser Mikhailo Podolyak said he believed Russia was suffering enormous losses in the battle for the town but conceded that the Ukrainian side was also seeing casualties. The fighting there and in neighboring Bakhmut is the bloodiest of the war so far, he said. Earlier this week, Zelensky said Soledar had been flattened by fighting and that everything was completely destroyed. On Wednesday, the president also said he had visited the western Ukrainian city of Lviv, near the border with EU member Poland, for talks on coordination and border protection, including the situation on Ukraine's northern frontier with Belarus. A close ally of Moscow, Belarus President Alexander Lukashenko allowed Russian troops to use his country as a launchpad for their invasion in February. After Belarus announced the establishment of a joint force with Moscow in the autumn, there had been fears of a frontline opening in the north. The fighting is currently concentrated in the east and south. In the southern region of Kherson on Wednesday, an exploding Russian shell started a fire at a maternity ward. A powerful blast wave knocked out windows in the children's ward and damaged one of the doctor's offices, regional governor Yaroslav Yanishevich said, adding that one employee was injured. In the east, Russian strikes targeted Ukraine's second city Kharkiv on Tuesday, in the wake of a surprise visit by German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock. Baerbock vowed further German support for Kyiv, but her Ukrainian counterpart Dmitro Kuliba, who accompanied her, said Berlin's refusal to send Kyiv battle tanks was costing lives. Last week, French President Emmanuel Macron promised Zelensky that Paris would send French-made light tanks to Kyiv, making France the first Western country to deliver tanks to Ukraine, and putting pressure on Germany. Separately, Poland's President Andrzej Duda said Wednesday that Warsaw was ready to send Leopard tanks to Ukraine, but within an international coalition. 
The German government has approved a request by defense company Kraus Maffei Wegmann to produce 100 howitzers for the Ukrainian army. Although it will likely take many months before the first artillery units arrive in the war-torn country. Berlin's readiness to sell such a large quantity of the Panzerhaubitz 2000 howitzer marks a significant increase in military support for Ukraine. Germany has already delivered nine Panzerhaubitz 2000 from its army stocks to the country, and Ukrainian officials have said that the state-of-the-art weapons have already made a valuable contribution to their fight against Russia's invasion. A spokesperson for Kraus Maffei Wegman confirmed that Kyiv had ordered 100 Panzerhaubitz 2000 from the company for a total price of 1.7 billion euros, and that the German economy ministry, which is in charge of arms control, had given the necessary authorization to start the manufacturing of the artillery units. The defense company spokesperson did not want to comment on how long it would take to produce the howitzers, but it will likely take many months before the first units can leave the factory. Crucially, the German government will have to issue additional permission to export the howitzers to Ukraine once they have been produced, meaning the final delivery of the weapons is not yet fully guaranteed. However, the fact that the government approved the production of the artillery units indicates that Berlin expects the war in Ukraine to last for a long time. A spokesperson for the German economy ministry declined to comment. Moscow's forces have been storming Bakhmut since midsummer in a bid to disrupt Ukrainian communications, Britain's defense ministry said in a statement. Part of the fighting has focused on entrances to the 200 km long disused salt mine tunnels which run underneath the district. Both sides are likely concerned that they could be used for infiltration behind their lines, the ministry added. Bakhmut is Russia's main military objective in the eastern region of Donbass, as well as its main obstacle for the further occupation of Donetsk province. Although, just like Soledar, Bakhmut was largely destroyed during fighting, Russians still cannot take it, even though Russian army commanders and Wagner mercenaries leader Yevgeny Prigozhin has been sending waves of hundreds of soldiers to their deaths in attempts to seize it. Prigozhin has claimed that every house is a fortification in Bakhmut and soldiers have to fight for every 300 meters there. Russia's merciless tactics in that area have already won the macabre title of the Meat Waves of Bakhmut. Prigozhin has styled the occupation of Bakhmut as his personal project. He claimed that as an important logistics center and a central point of the Eastern Front. It is a unique landscape, ravines and heights, which are natural tunnels, and the icing on the cake is the system of Soledar and Bakhmut salt mine, 